Hi guys, so I just thought I'd introduce myself. My name is Greg Kotzer and I work freelance in the film industry. Um, I work uh, a couple different jobs, but all within the camera department. So I've worked as a cinematographer on features, documentaries, music videos, short films, um, short documentary content, that kind of stuff. And then I also work as a camera assistant, mainly on commercials, but sometimes on features uh, or in other capacities, music videos uh, or whatever. So I find that I get a lot of my technical knowledge from the assisting side of it. And that transfers over, hopefully, into uh, when I'm able to shoot. But my first love is documentary, so I'm going to be talking about documentary today and specifically cinematography in documentaries. When it comes to documentary filmmaking, I feel that something interesting has happened recently, specifically when thinking about the visuals of more observational documentaries. With digital cameras becoming smaller, cheaper and camera sensors being able to provide better and better quality now, it's become uh, possible to shoot in ways that were previously impossible. This new wave of technology now enables documentary cinematographers more than ever to create images with a solid visual coherence. Now I can't find the exact quote, but I think uh, it was Matthew Heinemann who shot uh, Cartel Land that said that with today's cameras there's no longer an excuse for a bad looking documentary. And I think that's pretty true. So I thought I'd provide some ideas that I tend to follow when starting a new documentary and help uh, trying to establish a visual language of the film. I think it's important to note that uh, your visual language doesn't have to try and be to make every shot as beautiful as possible. I think the sole purpose of creating a look for a film is to create a mood that enforces and supports the story that it's telling. So a visual approach could uh, look super clean, it could be gritty, could be beautiful, could be dreary and and grey. It just depends really on what each story warrants. So when I think about documentary cinematography and the visual uh, decision making behind it, I tend to simplify it into three practical decisions. Framing, light and movement. Uh, these factors to me most influence how an audience is going to react to an image and I think are sort of the cornerstone of documentary cinematography. As the documentary form is pretty uncontrolled relative to other aspects of filmmaking, I think the biggest decision we as cinematographers make is the framing of the image. We're providing perspective, a way for the audience to view the story. The information we show in the frame is always a choice, and it's important to remember that. If something crucial suddenly happens and has to be captured, we don't always have much control over how it's lit necessarily, or how we're able to move the camera, you know, it might be a confined space, but one thing we always have control over is how the image is framed. And we decide what makes the frame and what doesn't. We decide how wide or tight we want to go, how much headroom we give, and how many shots or cutting options we want to provide for a scene. And all of these choices are going to change the way that the audience feels about a shot and a sequence. So although of course you can bring in lights onto a set if you'd like, I think if you're working in capturing reality, it's very important uh, to be aware of natural light. It's really the most important light on set. The way we decide to place the camera and the characters will impact the way that the scene is lit. So it can be front lit, back lit, hard or soft light, uh, with single or multiple light sources. Uh, I like to always have a bit of a look around the location first to see what lighting just naturally occurs in the space and how it'll change throughout the day and if it needs to be manipulated at all. It's a nice base to have uh, that knowledge in the back of your head so that if you come into a space later you have an idea of how the light's going to affect that space. And in creating a visual approach I think we should ask ourselves whether the story requires 
uh, this moment that we're filming to be lit flat or evenly exposed or uh, in a harsh silhouette or underexposed, uh, you should decide what kind of exposure is best going to affect the story and use whatever control you have to achieve that, whether it's switching on practical house lights in the room, closing a curtain halfway to flag a bit of light, or framing the character backlit against the sun or frontlit. It's all just going to change the mood and tone of the shot. Di Indonesia yang 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 kelihatannya sedikit disangsikan. So you're never gonna have enough budget in the world of documentary. That's just the reality. So when considering movement, it's important to balance practicality with a visual approach that works for the film. So I think people too often ask themselves what kind of way the camera should move, as opposed to whether the camera needs to move at all which in itself is a decision surrounding movement. I think locking the camera off on a tripod can sometimes be just as visually uh, appealing as manically chasing after a subject handheld. They're just different approaches. So decide on the necessary mood and let the movement uh, dictate that mood. With these three aspects in mind, I think there's some practical ways uh, that we can come up with an aesthetic plan sort of game plan before shooting a film. If there's a director, make sure to talk to them a lot. And if you're shooting it yourself and there's no director, talk to yourself a lot. Just talk about story, characters, themes, references, practicality of moving around gear. All these little nuances will help you to better establish a visual approach. And then come up with a plan. Create rules if you have to. For example, this feature doc that I shot, we decided that every single shot in the film should be locked off. So make bold visual decisions if they enforce the story and if it helps the story. And because we're dealing with documenting people, obviously things will never go completely according to plan, but I think it's important to have a plan anyway. And finally, every time you decide to push that roll button on the camera, just imagine that the director is going to be using the footage that you're shooting in their final cut. And I think this really pushes me at least to find the best frame and create the best frame, even if we've been carrying gear around all day and haven't slept at all. Uh, this idea that the director might use the footage that you're shooting at this moment, I think should really force you to be selective and deliberate about exactly what you're shooting. And with all of this in mind, it's important to realize that most of these things might be out of your control. You could find yourself shooting the most important moment of a film against a white-walled room with not enough light to expose the scene at all. But I think at all times when you're shooting, it's important to always question yourself and question that when the director is looking at the shot in the edit room, a year later maybe, is this shot that I'm getting at the moment the best possible shot I can get? And if not, ask yourself how you can make it better. <laughs>